This is section 6.6, .6, square roots. So do you remember what a perfect square is? And I'm not talking about the shape. For a number to be a perfect square, what does that mean? A perfect square is a number that we can get by multiplying another number times itself. For example, four is a perfect square because we can get it by multiplying two times two. So let's just list the first 15 whole numbers that are perfect squares. All right, so one is a perfect square because one times one equals one. Um, four is a perfect square because two times two is four. Three is a perfect square. I mean, not three is a perfect square. Nine is a perfect square because three times three is nine. Okay, so let me erase this part. 16 is a perfect square because four times four is 16. The next perfect square would be 25, then 36, Seven squared is 49, so 49 is a perfect square. 64 is a perfect square. 81 is a perfect square. 100 is a perfect square. 121. 144. 13 squared would be 169. 14 squared is 196. And 15 squared is 225. So, um, we, you know, we could keep going, but those are the first 15 perfect squares. So these numbers are the perfect squares because we got them by multiplying another number times itself. Okay, so the reverse of squaring a number is finding its square root. So when we find is when we try to find the square root of a number, we're asking ourselves what number did we multiply times itself to get that number. So for example, if I said what is the square root of nine, I'm saying what number can I multiply times itself to get nine? And the answer would be three. Now this symbol on the outside is called a radical sign and the number under the radical sign is called the radicand. Okay, so let's um, practice finding the values of the square roots. Okay, so again, we're asking ourselves, what number can we multiply times itself to get that number? So what can we multiply times itself to get 49? What is the square root of 49? That would be seven. What is the square root of one? One, because one times one is one. What is the square root of 81? That would be nine. The square root of 64 is eight. The square root of 144, that's 12. We didn't talk about this, but what's the square root of zero? It does have a square root. The square root of zero would be zero because zero times zero is zero. Now, as long as, uh, if we have a fraction, as long as the whole fraction is under the radical, it's like we're taking the square root of each part of the fraction. So the square root of one is one and the square root of 36 is six. Okay, so the same thing with this next fraction. We're just taking the square root of each part. The square root of four is two. The square root of 25 is five. <laughs> Now, 
all of those were perfect squares. But not all numbers are perfect squares. So if a number is not a perfect square, then the square root, of course, will not be a whole number. It's going to be an irrational number. And you would need a calculator to get a decimal approximation. For example, the square root of 8 is approximately 2.82842725, and it keeps going. It doesn't stop, and it doesn't repeat. So remember, an irrational number is irrational when it's a number that doesn't stop and it doesn't repeat, just like pi. So since we are not allowed to use calculators in this course, I won't be asking you to give me a decimal approximation of a number, but you may be asked to tell between which two consecutive numbers the values of the square root lies. So just like with 8, if we think about the perfect squares that are close to 8, 8 is not a perfect square, but 9 is a perfect square, and 4 is a perfect square. What is the square root of 4? It's 2. What is the square root of 9? That would be 3. So the square root of 8 lies between 2 and 3, and that's why it's 2.8, and it keeps going. Okay, so the two, the perfect squares, um, the two consecutive numbers that the value of this square root lies is between 2 and 3. Okay, so for 59, let's think of some perfect squares that are close to 59. Well, a perfect square bigger than 59 would be 64. The square root of 64 is 8. Okay, then a perfect square smaller than 69 would be 49. That would be, the square root of 49 is 7. <clears throat> so we know that the square root of 59 would be 7 point something. So the two consecutive numbers, they have to be one right after the other, 7 and 8. The two consecutive numbers that the value of this square root lies um, between is 7 and 8. Okay, so the two consecutive numbers that the value that square root of 2 lies would be, let's think of a square root close to 2 that's smaller than 2. Well, that would be 1, the square root of 1. Well, the square root of 1 is 1. The next one would be 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So we know that the square root of 2 is between 1 and 2.